Good evening. Hello, hello, hello to all you boss Tuvians. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's that's us. Why did I say that? I don't know. But yes, we are the boss Tuvians. Everybody who listens is Hoovians. Exactly. Well, not everybody's a Hoovian yet. That's true because some of the people who listen in they're not they're not Doctor Who fans, but they they think we're pretty entertaining. Well, that's cool. That's great. I'm glad that people listen whether they're fans of the show or not. But that that's a little crazy subject that we had going on this week. I mean, we we have quite some opposite people. Yes. That we've come across in the last couple weeks. Well, you know, that's the one thing that's great about having this radio show because in the past few weeks we've come across fans. We've actually met people who say, hey, I listen to your show. And I that's love awesome. that. Oh, I love that. It's fantastic. I love it. So basically um, what I've come across over the past couple of weeks is a dichotomy. Right. Right. So you got two completely opposite people. Well, like, wait, how completely opposite can you get? They either like the show or they don't. Exactly. Right? Well, well, here's here's what's going on. I recently started a new job, which I am kind of struggling to determine whether or not I'm going to keep it. But I met this person. Now, her her name is Chanel. But she she says that... Wait, are you sure it's not Chanel? Well, she says people are constantly calling her that. And, uh... It well, must be very confusingly spelled. No, no, no. If people can't even tell. No, because there's no H in her name. But they call it. But they keep calling her Chanel for some reason, and she gets irritated with it. Well, I think I would too if people, you know, didn't call me by my name and called me by something else. Well, what is your name? My name's Jimmy. Well, I'm Lucas. Well, I knew that. Oh, well, wait, we didn't say that yet. We have to tell the fans okay. that so they know they can differentiate between the two of us. We sound completely different. <laughs> yeah. This well, we okay, do. But, but that's still they still. <laughs> do not know which one is which. Just right. because we sound different doesn't mean that they would know who we are. Right, exactly. So, well, anyway, so, again, I'm Lucas. And, and I'm, I'm Jimmy. Right, and today's uh, July the 13th. Uh, Ready. Uh, yeah, wow. the month is flying by. The year's flying by. Yeah, bring on 11-23. Ele- uh, That's what I want. Exactly. All right, so going back to what we were saying before. Right. Is that this uh, this young lady who, who works with me now, um, I, I was trying to tell her about the radio show, and she'd never heard of Doctor Who, so I was trying to explain to her, like, what episode she needs to watch. Blink. Right, and she was like, no, well, I don't really like scary stuff, and I'm not really into science fiction. Oh, girl in the fireplace. Exactly, that's what I said, and she was like, she she actually started ignoring me at that point. She, wow. She, said, <laughs> wow. she didn't think that it was, uh, it was worth watching. Is she this type that is like, oh, sci-fi? Yeah, I'm not a geek, so I'm not going to watch that. You don't have to be a geek, because we were talking about this earlier, that Doctor Who is considered... What does science fiction magazine describe Doctor Who as soft? soft. No, I didn't say oh, soft. Okay, it's that's just <laughs> how I heard you say it? No, that's, that's not what I said. Me of. That's not what I said. This said soft science fiction. So it really doesn't... It, I mean, Well, you have to agree with that, because... It's not a whole lot of episodes that have, you know, creatures like uh, the Slavine from Raxacorca Falapatorius. True, but I mean, then you do have episodes like the Rings of Akaten. Yeah, that's where true. Everybody in there looks non-human except for maybe a dozen people. That's true. That's true. But the the point is, is that Doctor Who basically it extends past the realm of science fiction and it touches with uh, different emotions with each episode. So it's like, for example, with the girl in the fireplace. Yeah, you've got the um, the Victorian style robots True. that have basically penetrated into the 17th century from the 51st century, and yet it's not really science fiction that episode because of the fact that the Doctor becomes emotionally and romantically involved in this woman who he just whoa, met. Whoa, 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 whoa! There's like. Time portals right, throughout the, this girl's life and right. anywhere. And you're trying to tell me that that is not really science no, no, fiction. No, what I'm trying to say is that the episode is more so. It's kind of like more so of a love story than a science fiction episode. Yes, but there's also the time travel, and I'm pretty sure that's science <sighs> fiction. I know that. I know. I mean, I, we are only waiting for the time that it's science fact. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a different subject. <laughs> well, the reason why I say that is because of what I saw on the news yesterday. Where they're basically, uh, uh, they they found the remains of the frozen remains. These scientists, they found those frozen remains of a mammoth, and they were able to they were able to abstract blood, 
and DNA from this mammoth. Cool. So they're what they're trying to do is uh, take that DNA and recreate another mammoth. And so their like goal, Jurassic Park. That's the goal right there. They said that they're looking to develop a theme park oh with boy. prehistoric animals. They wow. actually said this on the news. I was blown wow. away by that. That's kind of shocking. Well, there's a lot that's shocking in life. True, true. But, I don't know, mammoths? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a... you know, don't you want to think that these things died for a reason? What reason is that? They didn't bundle up when it got cold? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But then you, you go back, and again, maybe I'm just playing the devil's advocate here. Like, um, what was his name in Jurassic Park? Um, Newman? No. Newman was great. No, the guy who played the fly. Oh, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Name. Jeff Goldblum, his character. He was just saying, you know, th- these things died out for a reason. Do you really want to bring back, you know, the dinosaurs? Right. I mean, right. <laughs> you bring back dinosaurs and then going to eat all the humans. And what's going to stop them? Whatever stopped them before may not stop them again before they kill us. That's true. Or That's something true. along those lines. All right. So basically, this girl... We're going to call her Chanel from now on, just to, just right. to get on her backside. That's fine. Just to me. irritate her. So she doesn't really want anything to do with this. But she said she was going to listen in tonight. Awesome. So, he, so here's the dichotomy. Hello, Chanel. Um, yes, hi, Chanel. Oh, I'm sorry. Chanel. Got to make sure we say your name right. Well, anyway, so we, we both know this young kid named Kevin. Yes, Kevin. Now, Kevin had, had been told by someone a long time ago, you got to watch Doctor Who because it's great. And then we met Kevin. Oh, we really ruined his life. No. Well, we have enriched his it, life. Yes, but the episode we showed him that was terrified him. Dude. That was one of the best <laughs> moments we've ever seen. That was great. <laughs> Watching someone's reaction to Blink the very first time it was great. Was just fantastic. It was absolutely. And he was hysterical. watching it on a handheld device. Right. Phone it was on his or phone. Something like that. Right. And <laughs> not the first time that you see the scary angel. But the second time, exactly. when Lawrence when looks it... away because he's worried about it creeping up behind him, and uh, Sally's already off running around. She's told him that there's now like three or four right. others running around. And he's and screaming, he's, saying, he's, give them the key, what, give them what they want. What if one comes up behind me? So he wants to look behind him to You're see if it's going to be there. And as soon as he does, the next scene, the next screen yes. is the entire angel face it right there. It was creepy. And... Kevin almost dropped the phone. It that was, was so awesome. funny. It was so funny. That was one of the best moments I think we've ever seen with this show. And now that was, what, two weeks ago today? Yeah, that's right. Two weeks ago it today. It was two weeks ago. How far is he? He's now gone into season three. Yeah. And so and that was Wednesday. He may be done season three for all we know. Well, he said there's a couple episodes that he wasn't able to find, but... We might be able to help him out with that and get oh, him Oh, yes, up. we can. Oh, yes, we can. We, we're trying. We so, uh, always have some good ways to get a hold of some Doctor Who episodes. Right. So there's, again, there's the dichotomy. You have Chanel, who doesn't want anything to do with this show, but she said she was going to listen in tonight. And then you've got Kevin, who has gotten through two and a half to three seasons. Can't get enough a, of it. Right, within a week and a half. And won't listen? And he's not listening. Why is he not listening? Having the foggiest idea. I mean, well, I don't know. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I don't know. All right, so, I don't know, man. So, everyone, <laughs> we're, uh, we're continuing um, with our review of basically every episode of Doctor Who since it's... In the modern era. Right, that's it. Right, since and, 2005. Right. So we've gone through almost all of Chris Eccleston's oh, first season. It's kind of sad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to to think that it's going to be over soon. I mean, I, I look forward to Tennant. Yeah. Love I mean, David Tennant. Which but we learned about um, a friend of ours who is doesn't seem to be too happy with the current doctor. Well, I don't know that he's not too happy. It's just that he's not David Tennant. Well, I mean, nobody is except him himself. That didn't well, make any sense. Yeah, no, that really didn't make any sense. I'm going <laughs> to ignore and pretend you didn't even say that. Um, Don't you do that with just about everything I say? Basically. Okay. But, yeah, no, I mean, David Tennant is missed by a lot of people, but that doesn't mean that everybody doesn't have their favorite. Right. I mean, that's, that's what it is. I, I posted on our Facebook page the other day uh, a picture of 
the 11 doctors, and basically everybody's got a doctor. Which one's yours? And it started this little conversation. It was a very small conversation, but he got very upset when I suggested that anybody might like anybody besides David Tennant. And then I got the shouting, the screaming, the all-caps message, and 12 exclamation points. He feels very strongly about this, that it is only David. There's a lot of people who feel that way. There's a lot of people people who just... My point was, that's fine. You have your favorite. That's good. Everybody has that. There's people that are feeling that way about Matt Smith right now. Yeah, and he's almost done with it. It may not be you. It may not be me. It may not be a lot of people we know. It may be. We don't know. No. But there's people that are feeling that way about Matt Smith. They don't want him to go. He's their favorite doctor. What about the people that started with the 11th hour? Oh, yeah. They've missed so much. They started. Then you can't deny someone their... Their feeling, their affection for their first doctor. No, you really can't. My, mine was the third, Pertwee. Pertwee. That, that, I, I still love him. He's great. I love the episodes. And he was basically stuck on Earth the whole time. Yeah, you got banned boring. here. Yeah. That's not fun. No, no. But okay. that's what I grew up with, and that was Doctor Who to me. I love where it is now, and I love Tenant more now. But anybody that came along after... I, I I was done. It was all three for me. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So, anyways, what we were saying before is that we're reviewing the the first modern season, right, with, with Chris Eccleston, and right now we're up to a two parter episode that we're going to talk about tonight, which is fantastic. It's, it's a great, great episode. It's the um empty child. the empty child and the doctor dances and the doctor dances. And this yes. is, I think, we both agree here, Jimmy, that that basically this is where um the season and the writing really took off it's it just skyrocketed from here well there's a reason why the writing for this episode is just that good Stephen moffat Stephen moffat this is his first episode this is his first time writing for doctor who and there's some really great things that happen it it it's scary it's moving Get you right in the feels. In the feels. Here we go again. Uh, sorry. What should I say? What's in, better for you? In the hat. In the emotions. In the hat. Well, that's how we say it. We're from Boston. I wasn't. I wasn't complaining about that. I was just complaining about the line in the hat. Well, I mean, that's where that's where you, your emotions come from, unless it comes from your leg or your toe or something. I think technically emotions come from your brain. All right. Your hat just so. pumps blood. That's true. Mm. Well, then why do we feel it there? That's just what we say. Yeah, that's true. Because it's more about it's what human pumps blood is, is our very essence, our being. We wouldn't be anywhere without our heart. You can still live and be brain dead. That's true. Your heart stops pumping blood, you're dead. Good point. So your heart is more uh, symbolically who you are. Okay. You know, your mind is more your intelligence and your knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge? But your heart is, you know, well, th- these are things that you don't always have or show, but there are other people do. Okay. Okay. I'll leave you. All right. All right, so, so um, we're going to go to a clip. I was looking for our clips, but. But we found them. Oh, there they there are. There we go. So the first one, well, tell I us. I don't know. What, what, I was looking for. What are you looking for? One? The Sonic Banana. Is that the one we're going to play? Is the Sonic Banana? No, I wanted to do this one. Okay, well... Because it was going along with Stephen Moffat writing for the show. Right. He's giving us a clue, an indication in oh, this yes. episode yes. right here that he has no heart, no soul. He <laughs> hates every Whovian fan. That's not true. We love you, Stephen. But... Go ahead. He is going to rip us a new one, emotionally speaking, (laughs) every time he writes an episode. Maybe not every time, but he does it time and time and time again. He's he's great at the horror. He's great at the scary. But he just, oh, man, he can get right to you. Yeah, he really does. Just taking away your favorite characters. And this clip actually is a great way to show you that he's going to do this time and time again. He gives us a warning in his very first episode. All right, go for it. All right. Everybody lives, bro. Just this once. Everybody lives. Dr. Cox. 
Constantine, who never left his patience. Back on your feet, Constant Doctor. The world doesn't want to get by without you just yet, and I don't blame it one bit. These are your patients. All better now. Yes, yes. So it's yes. They also seem to be standing around in a disused railway station. Is there any particular reason for that? Yeah, well, you know, cutbacks. Listen, whatever was wrong with them in the past, you're probably going to find that they're cured. Just tell them what a great doctor you are. Don't make a big thing of it. Okay. Dr. Constantine. This is how good. How much better you are looking. All right. So there you go. Stephen Moffat giving us a warning. He said everybody lives. Just this once. Yep, just the one time. Just this once. Now, to me, it was also uh, that scene was playing off of the last episode okay. where Rose gets her father. Oh, that's right. Taken away from her. That's right. There's that. She tries to save him, and in the end, he, he's still going to die. So, coming off of that episode, do you really want another one where everybody's going to die? So, you can see the doctor, what he was saying, that, you know, okay... She really can't take it right now. And he finds a way to save everybody. But Stephen Moffat's letting us know, no, 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 no. I'm going to be killing people. When I, <laughs> when I put yep. pen to paper, there will be blood. Yeah. What is it? Is that another reference back to the Princess Bride? There will be blood tonight. Yes, there you that go. One? I thought, yeah, I thought it's what you were going at. Well, he's not an Ego Montoya, but still. No, no. Who is an Ego Montoya? No one. Mandy Patinkin is. Is that th that's what his name is? That's his name, Mandy Patinkin. His name is Mandy. Mandy. Yeah. I know a girl named Mandy. No, uh, this is not that kind of Mandy. Well, I'm glad because he'll stab you through the heart if he hears you say that. Uh, yeah, you probably would. So he I'm might. sorry, Mandy. I apologize. He's a master swordsman. <laughs> He studied swordcraft for 20 years. That's right. Yeah. And then he used his dad's, which there was no equal. There was no equal. No. All right, we got off subject like we usually do. <sighs> well, that's fine. That's, that's the way. Fine. We, that's the way this no. show goes. That's exactly. how we get everybody listening in. Well, I don't know if anybody listens in just because of that. Oh, that's true. So why do people listen in? I don't know. That is a good question. I think I it's mean, a it's very good question. I, it is something I would like to know. I mean, is there something in particular that people like? About our show? Is it how we sound? Let us know. I mean, you may have found us on Facebook. You may have found us through Google or ooh, ooh, whatever. Ooh, ooh, but ooh, Google, ooh. Google. That's a good point. Because yes, we discovered. Uh oh. No, we nice. discovered something on Google. We discovered something because we've realized that there are people listening in multiple countries. There are people listening in 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 my home area. Well, I've never been there, but Italy, where yep. my family's from. In London, yeah. New Zealand, yeah. Britain, yeah. Australia, yeah. I don't know how this is possible, but Mexico and Brazil. Didn't we say that? No. Are you sure? I don't think so. I thought I said Brazil. You didn't say France. I didn't say France. Ooh, Finland France. and Finland and Canada and Sweden. A. Sweden, yes. Yeah. So we've got people listening in all over the place, but so we we wanted to figure out. How do people find us other than Facebook? Right, and, and, and Facebook does help us see, but it, it told us that some people have found us through Google. So it, it, it involved us doing a little research and a little digging. Yeah, how do people find us in Google? Yeah, I mean, exactly. were they searching for Boss Tuvi, and how can it be? We're how the only would ones? they know to search for us if they don't know us? We're the only ones? But if you search Whovian Online Radio, boom! We're number one out of nearly 43,000. Wow. That's so awesome. Thank you to the fans. I yes, mean, thank people you. People are searching us that way, and I we, don't know. Pe people are finding us, so that's good. Yeah, we're ridiculous. We're crazy. We're goofy and silly. And So maybe you heard of us through a friend or through maybe you know us personally or maybe you found us online or maybe you liked us from another page. Go to our page. Let us know. We'd love to hear how people are hearing about us. And feel free to tell your friends. Yes, We tell know your you know other Whovians. Have them tune in. Have them check us out. Yeah. Why not? I mean, you know, we've tried listening to what we sound like before, and I'm still trying to figure out what people like about us. I mean, I listened to one show, and I was laughing quite a bit. 
Yeah, the first one I tried to listen to, I thought we sounded retarded. Did you just hurt yourself? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. I kicked something sharp. <laughs> What's sharp? I don't might know, have been, but it got right between my toes. It might have been that hurt. right there where the wheel Wait. is. Okay, oh, so well, here's the problem, friends. Here's the, here's the problem, everyone, is we just moved. We have a new studio. Yes, we, have we do. new equipment. We're upgrading. So we're not used to the subtle nuances. and Like where I can put my foot that isn't going to stab me and cause pain. Worry about where you put your drink. That's all that matters right now. Don't worry about your foot. Your foot will heal, but you need to have your palate quenched. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry you hurt your foot. It's okay. It's fine now. Okay. All right. So we watched that one clip, which was really, really good. Seeing the doctor take advantage of this opportunity with the, the nanogenes, which have the ability to basically uh, recreate an injury and just fix it. Right. And because they had come across the boy while he was wearing the gas mask, they assumed that this is how creatures look on this planet. And now everybody's running around asking for mummy. <laughs> because that's what the boy was looking for. The boy was looking for his mother. Yeah. And 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 that's all he wanted. So the the nanogenes picked that up. They they knew that they wanted to help. They knew the kid was scared. They wanted to fix everybody. That's what they do because it was a it was a medical transport that right, had, that right, had crashed. Right. So it goes around and then everything that he touches, every one that he touches now becomes a new gas mask person gas mask person what an interesting concept so and and it was a really cool scene when you'd see that thing just like pop out of their mouth it was like almost like they were growing a snout it was and then gross. all of a sudden there's like you know oh it man was, it was so cool i thought it was kind of nasty it was creepy it was awesome it, it, yeah it was creepy i'll agree with that it was creepy wicked creepy so how do you stop that well you stop it with four Simple words. What are they? Let's find out. Did you just go to the beginning of this clip when you're supposed to be over there? I thought I thought that's just that's the one we were using from earlier. I thought. I don't know. Was it? Oh, okay. Let's try. Hold on. No, see, it's too late. Oh yeah, oh, it is at the beginning. Nope. Oh, we messed up again. That's what we do. We mess up, but it doesn't matter. Mommy, Here we go. Me. Don't let them touch you. What happens if they touch us? You're looking at it. Mommy. 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 Everybody in the hospital. Mommy. Go to your room. Wearing a gas mask. Go to your room. Cock their head, heads to the side like a dog would look I'm at you. very, very angry with you. I'm very, very cross. Go to your room! I'm gonna get a kick out of this in a second. Yeah. It surprises the doctor. Well, he is kind of shocked. I mean, sometimes it is just off the cuff. I'm really glad that worked. Those would have been terrible last words. <laughs> <laughs> and right. that's where we stop on that clip. Right. Yeah. What's, what's interesting about this here is that basically the storyline involves these nanogenes repairing this little kid. He's wearing a gas mask. They're trying to save his life, and they think that's the way this, this race of creatures, humans, right. actually exists. That is his anatomy. So basically he's... Uh, for lack of a better term, regenerated into that with uh, with the gas mask, and he's got this neural, uh, almost, uh, how would you say, this connection with so many other people, and they all look like him wearing a gas mask. Yeah, he's, he's like, tapped into them. I, I don't know if it's the nanogenes in them are still communicating until they, connection, can, maybe? until they I don't can know. fix it. A telekinetic I, connection? I don't know. It could be. Maybe so. I don't know. I'm not really sure. But, yeah, it's like everybody is seeing it through his eyes. Is it he's the master until they fix everything? I don't know. But um, really cool, really interesting scene there. But <laughs> the doctor doesn't always know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> he just took a stab at it. That He's talking to a child. He can send it to its room. Right. So it it happened to work. 
So what's our next clip? Let's see. I don't know. I like that one. That one's funny. <laughs> you like this one? All right, we'll play this one. What's wrong with your sonic screwdriver? Nothing. Sonic Blaster, 51st century. Weapon factories of Villengard. You've been to the factories? Once. Well, they're gone now, destroyed. Main reactor went critical, vaporized a lot. Like I said, once. There's a banana grove there now. I like bananas. Bananas are good. I like bananas. <laughs> bananas are good. Did you do that twice? Nice yeah, that was a clip. Did Digital. That. Squareness gun. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Mommy. Oh, now it goes to something else. Yeah, that that's all we want. Okay. That's but a, that was that was all I wanted. I, I like that little banana grove. Oh, I love it. Love the clip. Jack's a little dis, distraught, maybe. I don't right. know that that's the right word, but he's a little upset that the place where he got his gun is, is no more. And <laughs> it's a banana grove. Banana groves <laughs> because the reactor went critical. And, and it was the doctor's like, fault. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> I've been there once. <laughs> and he loves bananas. You yeah. should always have the banana. Exactly, and he's mentioned that before. Well. Is it before or after? Bananas have played, I wouldn't say a major role, but they're very, very much a recurring character. Yes. You know, banana daiquiris. Yeah, he said been how many centuries before? That's right. He may have invented the banana daiquiri. <laughs> Always bring a banana to a party. Yes. There's the um, river tries to shoot him and it's a banana. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> and and there's probably more. We're probably forgetting some, but bananas continue to to play out. I like y- bananas. you get to see bananas. I love bananas. I put bananas in my smoothie. I make well, I make just a banana peanut butter smoothie. Oh, with a little pecan. I don't like pecans. Pecans. I don't. You can do almonds or something. I don't like almonds. Walnuts or whatever kind. I don't of like nuts walnuts. You don't like nuts. I like peanuts. But the rest of the nuts the. I don't. I don't like how they taste. You don't want peanuts mixed in with your peanut butter. It's just. No, I don't. I'm just I'm saying. I like banana peanuts. Peanut butter smoothie. You can do it just that. I do banana and peanut butter is awesome. Well, technically, I'm actually trying to diet based on my blood type, and my blood type says I'm not supposed to have bananas. That so would have, be horrible news. I don't, I don't like know my blood type, but I hope it's not the same as yours. Yeah, I do too, because I miss oh, bananas. I bananas are bananas. good. Man, I love bananas. Yes. So I I would do bananas, vanilla almond milk with uh, spinach, uh, strawberries, um, uh, some protein powder. Uh, yeah. Did I say peanut butter? You might have. I don't know. I don't remember, but I add peanut butter, and it's really tasty. It's it it tastes like a liquefied peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's oh, because t- of the strawberries. Yeah, because of the strawberries. Okay, it threw me off there. I was like, wait, where did you get the... With a subtle hint of banana. Throw in some grapes. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't think about grapes. Yeah, grape Ooh. jelly. Ooh, uh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, we've <laughs> we ventured off subject. Now we're talking about food. Ooh, ooh, oh, okay. We, we've gotten through a half hour. Wow, already. So that, yeah, it's already. It goes by fast. It's too fast sometimes. So, we have to thank our sponsor. Thank uh, you. Mr. Parker. Uh, he's got a website, ASAP, ASAP, well, I, I really can't talk tonight. <laughs> oh, I got you laughing this time. <laughs> ASAPCPU.com. You can go there for hosting stuff and I don't know. You do you can... want to have your own radio show like we do? Yeah, we have a radio show, and we're stupid. Well, I'm stupid. Yeah, you are. Yeah, exactly. Make me laugh when I drink my beer. (laughs) Well, it's not like the times you've made me laugh, and I'm pretty much lost for the rest of the show. That's true. That's some fun stuff. I like it when that happens. Well, it's kind of distracting when I have to talk for, you know, minutes on (laughs) end, because I don't know when you're going to be able to control (laughs) your funny bone. Oh, I mean, are you talking about the humorous or the actual ability to laugh? Your ability to laugh. I'm not necessarily oh, your ability to laugh. Your ability not to laugh. Oh, yeah, that's We the know problem. you have the ability to laugh. <laughs> yeah, of course. You have plenty of laughs in you. Well, I like laughing. It's it's fun. It, it, it helps me overcome the difficulties of my life. I'm not arguing with you there. 
just saying, you do it a lot. Well, it makes the day enjoyable. It makes the show enjoyable. At least for me. Maybe people don't want to hear me laugh. Well, okay, you people, the internet, listeners. Does Lucas laugh too much? Do you want to hear me laugh? Or would you rather just have me shut up and Jimmy do the show? Hmm? Well, not me. Not shut up and me do the show. Yeah, because I think we, I think we have to do it together. I think so. I think we got I a good like rapport. Doing it with, together. Yeah. You know, it, it works good. Yeah, I think so. We wouldn't have anybody to play off of if well, it was just one. Right. It would be. I think I actually do think though, if it was just one person, it should be you. I think you would do a better job than if it was just me. That's what I think. Why? Because you'd always be laughing at yourself. <laughs> Maybe you don't oh, laugh. Wait at a yourself. minute. Maybe you only laugh at me. I'm not laughing at you. Just the things I say. Well, that and some of the stuff we come across. I mean, yeah, this is a Doctor Who radio show. But how often do we stay on target with the same subject? No, we venture off into all sorts of other geekery. Exactly. So and that's nerdery. what makes it fun. Nerdery. 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 Ooh, a nerdery. It's like a nursery, but instead of children, it's nerds. I was thinking it's more like a brewery. Ooh. Ooh. So nerds are grown there. And or brood. Or brood. Brood nerd. Brood nerd. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. <laughs> wow, we really come up with some strange stuff on yes, this show. Yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> okay. Um, but no, we venture off into a lot of different things. Star Trek and Star Wars and other geek things. But Superheroes. It's not I just mean, geek stuff. We talk about everything on the show. Right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that's not geek that we talk about. Uh, I don't think um, we do. Well, we might. I, I can't Well, think last of week we started with the Muppets. Yes, I love the Muppet show. I don't know that that's geek. No, it's just funny. That's just childish. Well, well, well right. that's not true because, you know, the Muppets are funny for The Muppets are great. Too. The Muppets are like the Muppets. bananas. They're good. Everybody loves the Muppets. Oh. Well, not everybody. I'm sure there's some people that don't like the Muppets. Who but... doesn't like the Muppets? My daughter. What for is... a long time, refused, just flat out refused that's... to watch The Muppets. That's unacceptable. She no. said she didn't like them. Why? That was the point. She had never watched them. And she just insisted that she did not like them. Well, she that's... finally got to watch them and she likes The Muppets. That's like saying your whole life you don't like broccoli because you've never tried it. And it just looks like you wouldn't like it. Because it does look like a small tree. but. Who doesn't you... like trees? I love trees. Yeah. Especially the tree on the, the second episode of Doctor Who when they went to the end of the world. That was a cute tree. Yeah, she was a cute tree. Yeah, she was really nice. <laughs> and he gave her the gift of his breath. And she said, ooh, how intimate. <laughs> and he said, there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> and that's the thing about the Doctor. He's always flirting. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, but also coming up with things just off the cuff. Coming yeah. up with something, you know, oh, we're supposed to have gifts. I don't have a gift. What can I do? I give you breath. Yeah, it's a wow. lot better than spit. It worked. Well, no, that's what they were given. Yeah, that was bad. They were given spit. I would hate to be Mostly spit on as rose. a gift. <laughs> Say again? Mostly it was Rose. Yeah, she did get spit on right in the face. Right between the eyes. That was, that was terrible. <laughs> right between the eyes. All right, do we have another clip we got to watch? Sure, we can watch another clip. Oh, 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 let's let's at least say say something about TitusBlue.net. Oh because yeah, we, they're we a great to place them. to go. Yeah, they really are. To watch Doctor Who. Stuff. Matter of fact, a friend of ours, Kimberly Jones, uh, she's been mentioning a lot how she'd like to go back in the past of Doctor Who and see some of the Fourth Doctor's episodes. She's wanting to see a lot from four. Right. So and I she's told having her. difficulty finding some. Well, I think the biggest problem is the fact that she's using an iPad. And yeah, I mean, nothing wrong, nothing against Apple products. I love my iPod. Well, right. Nothing, nothing wrong with them, because if you try to listen to this show via phone, Apple's iPhone the best way to go. seems to be the only one that can work. Yeah. Android. So far, we have not heard of any success. No, we so haven't. If as you're I, listening I actually... on an Android phone, let us know and let us know how you're listening. We'd love to know. We'd love to get that word out to other people that are dying to listen in, but but can't because so many people just, you know, right. fewer and fewer people even – oh, sorry, more and more people don't have a, a home computer or, or a laptop. They just go with their smartphone. Right, exactly. So 
as good as a computer may be or a laptop may be that will work, the iPhone seems to work the most and the best. Yeah. Although, although, although uh, Chanel or Chanel or whatever she wants to be called, yeah, uh, she said that she 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 sent me a message earlier stating that she wasn't able to get it. No. Nah. That's what she said. So I just told her, well, fine, we're halfway through, so bleh, I'll just send you the recording. I bet she didn't even try. She probably didn't. She probably didn't. With how often, like, we're in the middle of a conversation at work, and she'll just kind of look off and ignore me. She just hates sci-fi. Maybe she just hates She's me. She's a hater. Maybe she hates me. Maybe she does. I don't know. Always I, laughing surprised. Around her. I hate me. Are you laughing around her all the time, uncontrollably? No, not uncontrollably. There's some control to it. Okay. All right. I'd um, like to just show a little more restraint on the show. But <laughs> oh, well. At least you can at work. That's good to know. Maybe it's the drinks. It's the tiredness. That's what starts it off. Oh, look at you, always full of excuses. I like to excuse everything. All right, so what's the next clip we got? Okay, we already heard the clip of where the doctor sent the creature, the thing, gas mask people. Sent it to their rooms. The vast majority went right to their beds. Right. Because they were in a section of the hospital where a bunch of them had come from. Everybody else, even though they're adults, they're being rewritten as children. So Gas they all just went children. back to their rooms. Right. So we have a little more further discussion on that. Some of these children living rough around the bomb sites. They come out during air raids looking for food. Mommy, please. Suppose they were there when this thing... Well, don't mute it. It was a med ship. It was harmless. There we go. Yes, you keep saying harmless. Suppose one of them was affected, altered. Altered how? I hear. It's afraid. Terribly afraid and powerful. It doesn't know it yet, but it will do. <laughs> it's got the power of a god, and I just sent it to its room. Doctor, I'm here. Can't you see me? What's that noise? End of the tape. It ran out about 30 seconds ago. I'm here now. Can't you see me? I sent it to its room. This is its room. Are you my mummy? Mummy? Okay. And my signal, make for the door. Mummy? No! And there's another banana. <laughs> oh, that's one of the best lines ever on the history of the show. Which is? Don't drop the banana. Don't forget the banana. Don't drop the banana. He said, don't drop the banana. Why not? Why? It's a good source of potassium. That's right. <laughs> I have that one on my phone. Oh, that's such a funny <laughs> line. And, you know, we're look, what we're doing, everyone, is we, we're actually looking at uh, clips. Every single week, we whatever clips we have, they're on YouTube. So... Well, actually, one time we had to have a, I think we had to have a DVD inside the com inside of um, equipment that had the full episode, and we just had to stop it at certain intervals. Yeah, we had to do that. Some episodes are very difficult to find clips from. Right. This one was not. Right. There was a few clips that I really wanted that I couldn't find, but for the most part, this one had a lot of great things. I think it's because it's a Moffat episode. Yeah, probably so. I oh, mean, oh, a lot of people so. are going to love that, and there's going to be a lot of great clips from it. Definitely. So... so but what I'm looking at is this uh, this quote, well, not this quote, this comment that a person made about this particular episode. They said, this episode scared the crap out of me. Oh, yeah. It was terrifying. Oh, that it was. little it was... kid standing there in the middle of World War II wearing a gas mask, just constantly saying, are you my mummy? Well, it also goes into what Moffat does. He takes things that you may not be scared of or things that are just kind of creepy or a little off. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's met a weird kid. Everybody's met a, a, a weird, creepy old person. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, just things like that. Things that you shouldn't normally be scared of. Why would you be scared of a child? Why would you be scared of an elderly person? Mm -hmm. But we all have that... Is it the fear of the unknown? Once we're adults, we, we basically forget what it's like to be a child. We're afraid of becoming old and becoming that creepy, scary person. Um, I'm afraid of becoming a creepy, scary person. I mean, I was terrified of old people when I was young, basically because I was a little hooligan, and they didn't like me much, so they always yelled and screamed. And A little you know. hooligan. Hooligan. Now, what is... 
What? Hooligan mean. Well, Hooligan. I got into trouble. Might know that. I mean, I'm assuming that, but I mean... A miscreant. A, a miscreant? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Miscreant. I wouldn't say I was, like, as bad as Bot Simpson, but, you know, close. Wow. Okay. I did some pretty bad things. Because, you know, Bart one time took the dentures out of his grandfather's mouth, shoved them into his mouth, <laughs> and then basically bit onto the blade of a moving ceiling fan and just spun around the living room. I never did that, no. Oh, good. That might have no, been I, painful, I, I especially when he slipped off and slammed into the wall and then into the floor. Yeah. Yeah, that, was, must have, that looked like it was kind of painful. And then they basically, he, they broke Grandpa's teeth. <laughs> they wrapped him up in some tape and shoved him back into his mouth. Well, I, I certainly did my share of breaking things. Oh, right behind my best friend's house... There was this elderly couple who absolutely hated us because we would play whatever our version of two-person baseball was in the back alley, street. It was a very small street. It was almost like an alley. Well, that's, I mean, up back home at, in Lawrence and Lowell, I mean, everything's congested. All yeah. the streets are narrow. There's alleys everywhere going through every neighborhood. Right. And basically, that's all you have. I mean, yeah, there's the local commons where you can go and uh, play ball in the park or something, but you know if you just we didn't always have time to go to the park. It was like you can go outside and play for a half hour. Well, even if we jump on our bikes, it's going to take us like five ten minutes to get there, five ten minutes to get back. Yeah, and if you're getting into play time, right? And if, and if you just right, if you can kind of create your own little ball field right outside your house, that's what you should do. That's what I did. We played. That's what we did. We played basketball, street hockey, football, oh, and baseball every hockey. year. Oh, man, we played our share of street hockey. Oh, I loved it, especially when it snowed and there was a solid sheet of ice. And good times, Oh, man. it was good stuff. We'd good slip times. and slide everywhere like we were actually skating. Yeah. It was fun <laughs> stuff. You'd fall and hurt yourself. It was great. But that's not why the people hated us, the old people. They hated us because the uh, foul balls that would end up breaking their screens. <laughs> <laughs> I've, yeah. I broke a couple of windows back home. <laughs> well, uh, broken windows, but they they had a screened-in porch. <laughs> I'm just imagining. And yeah, that. yeah, we turned some of those screens into Swiss cheese, really. <laughs> and they would never give us our balls back. Okay. That that was that's why we hated them. So come winter time, we would throw snowballs through the screens. <laughs> There's always plenty of snow yeah, there see, to do that. We were antagonizing them. That's true. But w as a child, we assumed that they were doing it first. I mean, we're just playing in the street. We're we're doing anything that a normal kid might want to do. Right. So because we're playing in the street, they don't like that. It's just a screen. Who cares about a screen? We had no concept of what it might cost. <laughs> we just wanted to play. <laughs> I did that once with no, with no concept. And I completely lied about it, too. It was this... Uh, oh, I've done my share of it, it was this one kid who lived with us when I was younger. He was a horrible, horrible influence on me. And he was basically trying to back the, the, the station wagon, if you remember yeah. those. The station wagon, he was trying <laughs> to back one. it out of what really can't be considered a backyard because it was only big enough to park two cars. And it was in the middle of an alley. So <laughs> I'm trying to back it out. It's snow everywhere. There's ice underneath it. And he says to me, and I'm what, maybe 13, 14 years old at the time, he says, why don't you get in the driver's seat and hit gas? Hit the gas pedal so we can get this thing out. I hit the gas. It moved quickly right into the neighbor's fence. At least it wasn't into him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so here me, I'm an idiot. <sighs> There's brown paint from the fence <laughs> all over the back of the station wagon, which was white. It was a white station wagon with now a new edition <laughs> of brown paint on the back. Nobody will notice this. And my father's like, so where'd the brown paint come from? And I, what did I say? Oh, it was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've flat out lied before. Yeah, that was a... Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Childhood, good times. <laughs> good times. So is it just that? I mean, is that what makes old people seem scary and creepy to us? I, I don't know. but. Moffat has that way of taking those things that s should seem nice and innocent. Helping someone. Helping someone that you just met. A child, an elderly person. And it turns into be your last day on this planet. Wow. So, this 
creepy little kid running around looking for his mummy is so scary. Yeah, and then the is. girl comes it along and is like, don't touch it. Don't even get near it. Stay away from him. They're terrified. So we're being introduced to the scene. We don't know exactly what's going on, but everybody there that does knows that this thing is deadly. So you're immediately scared. Yeah, well, and it was it was just a great, scary, creepy episode. The first time I watched this, it was just so. Uh, I mean, the music was good. Mm-hmm, it just mm-hmm. it it got you right there when when they realized it was in the room with them. It was that music there that it's just oh man. Yeah, it good was stuff. It, like you say. It was it hit right in the feels because it was it was really creepy. And then just learning everything about the kid, like like his mother. Pretending that uh, the kid was uh, her her brother for so long, just yeah. hiding the fact of the fact that that she had him as a teenager, and and then but then it went from scary to actually very touching at the very end of the episode. And and for me, when I rewatch it, knowing that's the ending, it's not so scary anymore, but just sad. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and it's like the doctor says at one point. You know what. What boy in the world wouldn't do anything to find or I think he save said his mummy? I think he said something along the lines of what boy – Well, there isn't a boy in the world or something like something that. Something wouldn't – boy wouldn't, wouldn't like uh, plow through the world or yeah, to destroy yeah. the world to save his mummy. Absolutely. Well, that's, I, mean, I mean, that's, that's the case. I love my mother. Absolutely. I mean, and, there's, and, and most kids do, and they would do anything for mom because mom did everything for us. Yeah, that's true. We can't deny that. Oh. Well, oh. Mummies are like bananas. They're good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Do we have another clip? We have another clip. Ooh, we have another clip. Yeah. I right. don't know why I do that. I sing no. everything. And well, all right, I'll try to stop. Okay, we'll play a clip. Okay. What's that about ringing? What am I supposed to do with a ringing phone? Don't answer it. It's not for you. And how do you know that? Because I do. And I'm telling you, don't answer it. Well, if you know so much, tell me this. How can it be ringing? It's not even a real phone. It's not connected. It's not... See, at that point, it had me thinking, was she a ghost or something? Yeah, me too. You know, she just disappeared. She just disappeared. Hello? This is the doctor speaking. How may I help you? Mommy? Mommy? Who is this? Who's speaking? Are you my mommy? Who is this? Mommy! How did you ring here? This isn't a real phone. It's not wired up to anything. Mommy? All right, I think it's good. Rose? That's good. Yeah. It, it, it got it to enough that I don't know that it scared the doctor. It definitely worried it, him. It had him very confused. Why is the TARDIS phone ringing? That girl disappeared. You know, she knows something that he doesn't know. The doctor hates that. Yeah. Unless you're River. Oh, he loves he, River. He, she, she could know everything that she he doesn't know, know and he'll still just fall for whatever yeah. she does. Yeah. So there's things going on that he doesn't know. This somehow something is making the TARDIS phone ring. Which is strange again because of the fact that, it, like you said, this is not a real phone. Right. You know, it's this, not hooked up to anything. This is an illusion. Right. And if you've seen the original TARDIS, it didn't have a phone. It was just a cylinder. Yeah. That's all it was. Yep. And it just got locked into what appears to be a a 1950s style. Phone box. Yep, phone box for calling the police. In, in blank, uh, he says that, you know, the windows are the wrong size. Oh, that's right. He did Billy. say that. Yeah. Because um, what, what he was talking about was how it's changed over the years. Mm-hmm. That, you know, it's not the same as an actual phone box anymore. Um, and, and the design of the TARDIS has changed. Not just the interior, which we notice, I think, a lot quicker than we do the outside. Um you know, there wasn't always the uh, St. John sticker <laughs> yeah, which, on there, yeah. that sort of thing. But you know, some things, like the size of the windows, 
we're, we're not always going to notice that, but someone over there would. So Billy commented on that. Yeah. No, I, actually, I'm I'm missing that uh, that St. John sticker myself because I have a TARDIS. Well, it's not a real TARDIS, but I took my DVD case and made it into a If TARDIS. you had a real TARDIS, <laughs> things would be very different You would right not now. be announcing that. No. Well, that's a good point. I really got to keep these things quiet. He has a real TARDIS. No, 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 I he don't. He does. <laughs> next week, we're going to give you his address. <laughs> we actually, what are we talking about next week? Oh, next week is Boomtown. Next week, Boomtown? Already? Already. So we get to see more of the Slovene from... What's the planet called? Raxacorca Fallopatorius. Raxacorca Fallopatorius. It's just fun being able to say that. I love that planet. (laughs) Not to be confused with Plum. Plum. (laughs) Plum. That's the other one. Plum. Plum. (laughs) It was so fun. No, I don't come from Raxacorca. See, I can't even say it now. Raxacorca Fallopatorius. Right. Well, you know, that episode, which we'll get to uh, in the second season... It's not everybody's favorite, but I got a kick out of it because it was mm-hmm. it was filmed differently. It was different. There was so much of it that was funny. I did. I liked that episode. It was very strange. It was different, but I liked it. It it was great. Yeah, and I like the little. Uh, uh, I don't think anybody else would capture this, but me. But the uh, the little Simpsons reference. Okay, so oh, all right. So I don't here remember it is. that. So what was that? So that basically, like you've got this whole crew of people mm-hmm. that have learned about the Doctor. So they right. were actually meeting together on a regular basis to talk about who's this doctor, blah, 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 blah. And as one girl, you know, they've decided, well, let's kind of get to know each other a little bit deeper. You know, everybody's kind of discussing their uh, their little hidden talents. And one woman plays the guitar and sings. So right. she starts singing a song. And the first time I heard it, the first thing I thought of was The Simpsons. Because what? there was an episode. Well, let me see if we can find it. Because yeah, basically in the episode, no, we're not going to be able to find it. It's too much time. So... <laughs> So We're, we are running out of time right now. In, in this, in the particular episode of The Simpsons, um, Homer and Marge are not getting along. Shocking. Shocking. And uh, all of a sudden, she says, you know, she gets kind of upset with him, and he's, he, he, I think it was the episode with the monorail, where basically he got a job as a monorail, and she's like, it's so dangerous. And he's like, we monorail conductors are a crazy breed, eating up death like many ordinary peanuts. And she's like, "Good night, home." He's like, am, "He's like, am I turning you on?" And that's when she turns the light off. He's like, "What if I do this tap button? What if I sing to you? What if I talk like this?" And then he's like, "I gave my lover chicken. It had no bones. Mmm, chicken." <laughs> so, and so. this reminds you of. She sings that. Oh, the, she does. Yes, yeah, she sings those lyrics. Oh, and okay. The first right. time I saw I it, I lost that. it. I lost it. I was cracking up laughing. All right. <laughs> I don't remember it. I didn't catch that reference. But I do. I know a lot of people that were bored senseless from that episode. I thought it was good. I thought it was I decent. I did. I liked it. I've, I've made it through every episode. So, Me too. Me too. I well, mean, the modern season. It's been tough getting through the old stuff. Oh, I love the old stuff. Yeah, it's it's classic cheesy sci-fi. Ah, classic cheese. Mm. I like cheese. Cheese. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We we have to express right now a bit of gratitude to my mother-in-law for taking the time to stir my pot of spaghetti sauce. I'm making a big pot of spaghetti sauce with get this three pounds of ground turkey meat, mm. seasoned well, and it's just sitting there simmering. And since we've been on the show for an hour, I have completely neglected the importance of getting up and stirring it. But she's been out here doing that. Yeah, I've no, noticed her coming nice. out so, here. I didn't know what she was doing. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. She probably just came out for whatever. Maybe she wanted to hear us live on our show for a minute. Probably. Oh, she, stir- oh, she said no. She came out specifically to stir the sauce. Or maybe she just wants to taste it. So she's probably going to taste That's it and tell it. me. It goes. She's going to say, you know what? This needs more salt. And, you know, we're trying to cut out. down on our salt intake. But I don't think it's going to taste good. I think I messed up this time. Because I do make my sauce from scratch. I learned that from my father. Because my father, no, not like actually scratching. Okay, from base ingredients. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, she just looked at me and said salt. <laughs> salt. So we're going to add more salt to it when we finish up the show in a few minutes. But my father, he learned to cook from his mother. 
And uh, yeah, and his mother I never met. She died before I was born. Rose Borelli. Rose? Rose. Ooh, 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 like Doctor Who. Wow. Interesting. We that just made cool. an interesting connection. Wow, that is pretty cool. Yeah. My mom's name was Martha. Now I'm jealous. Yeah. Now I'm jealous because yeah. Martha is just oh, – Martha some sweet chocolate. My mom was not sweet chocolate. I mean <laughs> Martha from the show. That's what I mean, Martha from the show, not Martha from your mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> this yeah. is what makes the show great. I love doing this show. Unpredictable. It really like is. It. It's, it's, we can't have – you know, our producer – and I apologize to you, Asa, for saying this – but Asa said we need to have an outline. And I say – We have an outline. We watched two episodes. That's what we're talking that's about. That's the outline, right. That's but the if, outline. But if we if we stayed to a script one time, one time, and it was at the very beginning, and what were we told? It was boring. So can't do it anymore. Nope, it was can't do it. boring. Not going to do it. Because if you know what we're going to say, then there's no – I don't know. Well, it just loses it, I think. Right. I mean, I, I think – we get through a lot of what we need to say. There's a, there's a few stumbling. Sometimes you say something completely stupid, and I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> or sometimes we run into problems and say, oh, this is a great quote. Finish we... this quote for me, and we're never going to find it because I don't know what quote you're talking about, and I don't know what, what it mattered to you. Yeah. And so, you know, you're like, oh, how does that end? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so I think that was even back when we were scripting it. Yeah. We still didn't know. So no. it adds that extra little bit to it. Yeah. You I don't know, know if the word panache came to my mind. I don't even know what that means. But, you know, what does that, that mean? That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, I it's mean. It's a word that Lucas doesn't know. <gasps> sure Imagine can. that. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's a, isn't it the song that. You um, keep using that word. I do not, I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> Go ahead, just start using panache all the time. What does that mean anyway? Look it up, you'll learn it better. I don't want to look it up. Oh, look it you, up. No, tell, we should tell the play fans. Play your clip. All right. Play your clip. This is the clip I was talking about from The Simpsons. Go ahead and play it. Okay. We monorail conductors are a crazy breed. Half in love with death, gobbling up danger like ordinary men eat peanuts. Am I turning you on? No. What if I undo this button? Good night, Homer. What if I talk like this? What if I sing to you? I gave my love a chicken. It had no bone. Mmm, <laughs> chicken. Okay, we have a technical problems here where we can't get our computer to work right. Oh, no. What the heck is going on? I don't even know if anybody can still hear us, but, um... Let's find out. Are we, Are still? we still? We don't ah! even know if we're logged on anymore. Our <laughs> screen keeps going black. All right, we gonna we're gonna have to have this computer looked at because this is getting a little. Okay. Go down here. Go down here. Down there. Well, I'm, I'm down kinda... here. There we go. That's the one. Yeah, we're yeah, still we're still on. Through. Well, we, we don't really know. Yeah, we are. Well, no. Go to that summary. Summary. Yeah, we're still connected. Yay! Alrighty then. We're still connected. But that little video clip was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't like part of a longer one. It was still going. <laughs> but I actually know it might have been good uh, if right. it if it had kept going and you know people were listening to that and then all of a sudden, hey, they never signed off their show and that was just it. <laughs> they ended with the Simpsons. It's no, not like we haven't no, ended with other things before. It's just it's just this computer. We basically, I think we bought a lemon. But we'll, know. you know, we'll I mean, just that was weird. It's never happened before. No, that's never happened before. The whole screen just went out and we didn't know what was going because on because I touched. The keyboard. Yeah, and then it went out. And, and it's doing just did it, it again. again. Ah, it just did it crap. again. What in the world is going on here? What is wrong with your computer, I dude? I don't know. What? Why is my email up? Well, I thought I signed out of this. No, um, you did. I don't is this know. Asa? It might be. He might be messing around with us. He's it. messing Asa, around with us because in, you said it. something against him. No, I didn't say anything against him. About him? No, it was basically you he said, said he was said crazy was, and I, stupid I, I, and I other things. I didn't say any of that. Not on the air, you didn't. I didn't say it off the air. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Great uh, okay. googly moogly. Great googly moogly. Yeah. Well, so that about does it for this week, though. Yes, it does. Um. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. I, I meant the fans. Oh, sorry. Did they have a good time? Let us know. 
Um, we're always looking for ways to improve it. We're still very new to this. We've been doing this for a few months, but um, we know we're getting new listeners all the time because we're, as we expand into almost a dozen different countries, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that are listening to us. So tell us what you think. Do we need to add more languages? I don't know how we can work out translating, but... I can speak Spanish. I mean, we could probably translate that way, but I don't think it'd not be Not everything. No, no todo, pero yo puedo comunicar o traducir algo en todo. You know, I can probably translate almost everything. Almost everything? What's the translation for Titus? Titus? Talis? We, well, would you have to do a literal translation of time and relative dimensions in space and then make a new acronym from that? Time and relative dimension in space. Well... Uh, time uh, don't is hurt tiempo, yourself. relativo. Don't hurt tiempo y relativo. I don't know how to say dimension. Dimension, I think. It, You're just making it sound Spanish. Well, no. In all, honesty, in all honesty, there's some a lot of English words. The only way to pronounce it in Spanish is the way it is in English. Yes, but that's not all of them. And I think that's what you're doing right now. That's I'm on to your game. I'm... I know what you're doing. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> anyway. That's it for us. That's we're it. We're done. We're signing off. You'll see so, us next week. Yeah, you will. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll see you whatever. All right. Wibbly wobbly. Timey wimey. Tra. Tra. Let's play that one. Twice. Oh, twice. There we go. And hit the button. No, put it somewhere. No, output. Input. There we go. Locked.